In this video, we are going to finish supercharging the LSC Express 15 passenger Chevy van. No turning back now, people. We can go ahead and install our dual valve springs. This is insane. First starts. Now, since we are about to add boost, more airflow into this six liter LS, we need a way better exhaust system. So off to Fluid Motor Union we go. For now, I'm going for a total sleeper look on the van. So I wanted the exhaust to have two different modes. To accomplish this, Fluid incorporated two high flow mufflers and an X pipe for normal driving. And for spirited runs on a closed course, Mexico or the Autobahn, they used a fast acting electronic cutout. The finished product is truly a work of art fit for a Ferrari or an ultra rare and totally mint condition white Chevy contractor van. I just got to Fluid Motor Union. I've been working all day long. It's like eight o'clock at night. Uh, these guys got done with the van a couple of hours ago, so I haven't even seen the exhaust in person. I've only seen the footage you guys just saw, just pictures and stuff that they've sent me. It looks amazing, of course. Oh man, are you kidding me? What? <laughs> this is the exhaust of my $4,000, $202,000 mile Chevy Express 3500. This is nuts. Look at this cutout. This is beautiful. Wow. I can't believe this is my van. Oh, and check it out. We kept the old crusty tailpipe that is connected. I'm going for the patina look. It's going to look like it's a normal work construction type of van, but it's going to sound like this. Okay, so kind of stockish at idle. <laughs> So going through the mufflers, it's got this nice deep throaty LS sound. And then with the remote, we hold this guy down. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, give it some throttle. Just a normal work van. That's, that's all it is. Then we just hit this again. Oh, oh my gosh, that thing is so instant. Hold on. I would just like to point out that the same shop that did the exhaust on my LSC Express van also works on cars like F40 Ferraris. I'll drop all their info down below. If you guys need your car fixed right the first time or pretty much anything modified on your car, Fluid Motor Union, Naperville, Illinois. People ship their cars all the way out here from all over the country. They're that good. go here we go <laughs> listen to that blower it's not feeding any air into the engine whatsoever but it sounds cool indiana 93 miles to go listening to some jason aldean we're out in the country it kind of smells like poo a little bit but i'm loving it i'm having a good time it's raining oh man but 389 in indiana and i wish we had 389 in chicago ours is like 489 for regular it's ridiculous. All right, this is ridiculous. Check this out. <laughs> this is so dope. This is what I'm talking about. These are the roads that I need out in Chicago. I mean, it's not happening, but this is beautiful out here. Look at this. Wonderful Indiana. My neighbor. Here we are. Here we are. All right, guys, so I'm in Indiana at Indiana Muscle Car. And you may be wondering, why am I in this beautiful shop with a ZL1 Camaro on their dyno and, and my patina van? It's because Justin, Taylor, and Jordan are the experts in vans. These guys in the whole country have built, like, how many of these? About 15? Easily. Yeah, so they have built twin turbo vans, supercharged vans, and they know it all. So they've even designed a custom shroud for these vans for the fans. They're experts in the fuel system, so we ordered up this Aeromotive fuel pump setup that has this guy right here, which I've never seen before. So we're gonna be installing a full fuel system with 1,000 cc fuel injectors from my guys at Fuel Injector Connection. We have a ton of cool Aeromotive parts. This is gonna be probably the biggest, most capable fuel system on any of my cars. Look at this, we got all the lines. 
We got it all. And we got the pros here that are going to fabricate the cold side using this monstrosity right here. So this is the intercooler from a 2004 to 2006 Pontiac GTO. So these guys have figured out that this in conjunction with their trans cooler fits perfectly on these gigantic vans. So these guys work on a lot of newer cars like this and they always wrap every car they're working on so nothing gets scratched. I made sure to tell Justin, if I'm bringing the van out here, you know, we gotta protect the tri-coat primer. There we go. Yeah, I don't want anything getting chipped. This is the perfect level of patina right now. We had to hold these in with some zip ties, I know. It broke, the first time I took the headlight out, it, it yeah. It's pretty sweet. We got new ones though. Headlights out and the grill basically pops out as well. Very easy to take a lot of this apart. So we're gonna swap out this feather duster trans cooler right now for something that will allow us to fit the intercooler. And the guys at Indiana Muscle Car have figured out that this trans cooler from Earl's fits perfectly and we can use the quick disconnect so that we can simply reuse the factory GM lines. All right, she's gone. Now this is the last time we'll have this this old Vortec intake off. This was just put on there temporarily by me. So we had an air filter. Goodbye. Coolant reservoir is going away. And look at the amount of room we have in here. It's a beautiful thing. We got the blower. This thing stayed on. So that was nice. So we only have 10 days before the fill the van with cans event. And these guys have built all the brackets and everything. Here's one of the pro-charged vans they built and you can see the brackets that they fabricated. So we're gonna do something along those lines for this. Right now, Jordan is cutting out an eighth inch piece of aluminum for the bracket that he's drawn out here for one of the sides. And this is for the intercooler. Right now we're gonna drop the fuel tank. So this is the main feed. We're gonna replace this. Uh, this is the EVAP line that is going to stay. Uh, this is the charcoal canister that's gonna stay as well. And luckily I drove this thing in on fumes because look at the size of this fuel tank. Uh, luckily this van doesn't have any rust at all and it's just two straps. There we go. World's longest bolt. Look at that though, no rust whatsoever. And some good North Dakota dirt. Get this strap out of the way. I mean, can we just take a moment to appreciate how nice these straps are? You Southern folk just don't understand what we go through. These guys know what's up in Indiana. You guys get rotted out, rusted garbage as well. It's funny though, I traveled to North Dakota to get this van, oddly enough. Pull the filler off right now. The filler neck is disconnected. Sweet. Drop it. Yep, yep, yep. Good, good, good. Uh, we have one fuel line. This, this is disconnected, just get it in the way. Okay, there we go, there's one. Are we free? We're free. I think we're free. There we go. All right. Look at that. There's probably only like two gallons left in this thing. We got it. All right. We're gonna get this guy on the table. We can work at our level. Perfect. Don't need that anymore. Nope, that's gone. Hey, look at this. September 6, 2013. This is a 2012 van that was probably built in late 2011. So I wonder if they replaced this after only about a year or so. Now we're definitely gonna be replacing a lot of parts on the van and I've already installed a new built transmission and new tires from PriorityTire.com. And I've put a few hundred miles on these Land Golden tires from them. I'd never used this brand before and I gotta say, they're nice, super quiet and I've driven them in the rain, excellent traction, just overall, a really nice budget-minded tire. If you guys need tires, check out the site. I'll leave a link down below, but Priority Tire has it all. It's super easy to search as well. 1999 Ford Mustang, SBT Cobra. And they have thousands of different tires to choose from. So no matter what your budget is, you can get your Continentals, your Bridgestones, and they also have more budget-friendly tires available as well. And check this out. You can get drag radials and racing tires as well. These hook so well. They also offer a 90-day money back guarantee and free FedEx shipping. These van tires came right to my door in two days or you can find an installer near you and have them shipped directly to them. I did this with the van and they were installed quickly and for a great price. Buying from Priority Tire also makes you eligible for tire rebates with specific manufacturers. This way they help you save even more money. And this is awesome. I haven't seen any other tire site do this, but they give you a military discount, teacher discount, 
first responder discount, medical staff discount. They even have a first time buyer discount as well. And you can get financing on the tires so you can split this up and pay monthly too. I've gotten a couple sets from them now and their reviews are amazing. They also have really good customer service. And look at this, these are their warehouses located in the United States. Now, if that wasn't enough, Priority Tire also has a membership program to save you even more money. So tons of benefits with their membership program. Now, the best part is if you guys wanna save even more money on your next set of tires, then click on my link down below and at checkout, use coupon code LEGITPT723. That's LEGITPT723. That's gonna get you 5% off, but it's for a limited time only. So if you want new meats for your car and you wanna save a ton of money, PriorityTire.com. Now let's get back to making my van really fast. So here's the game plan on the fuel tank. We need to clean it up and then here is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna be installing a second fuel pump module here. So we have to drill a hole in the tank, in the plastic, and we're gonna be leaving this one as is. So under normal driving conditions, the van will function just like stock with the factory fuel pump. And then when we get into some boost, it'll have a hob switch and it'll activate that. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's ready. It's ready for for this. No pressure here. X marks the spot. So this is just a little nerve wracking. We only get one shot at this. This is where the frame rests right here. So we we should be good. I think. I, I think we're this. good. Yeah. Look at this. I'm in good company. Milwaukee fuel over. Yeah, I got that. What? I we're, have to have something that he doesn't have. We're we're, com we're comparing. We have the shop back. Okay, I don't I don't have the Milwaukee shop back. So you got me okay. on that one, Justin. Yes. Yeah. But do you have the 3 8 impact ratchet? No. Heat gun. Oh, no, I don't have the heat gun. I thought that was a drill from far away. I'm like, what are you showing me? A drill? Of course I got the drill. Two Whoa. I got to get the heat gun. Milwaukee, come on now. Send me a heat gun. I like to heat stuff up. All right, the deal is, is that I have to drill the tank here because if I mess up, it's my fault. Go right there. Here we go. No turning back now, people. Look at how thick this is, though. That's nice. Good job, GM. This is really neat. We're able to use the factory bolts here for the bracket for the condenser to mount up the intercooler. Man, Jordan, this looks awesome, dude. And here's Jordan's finished product on this bracket. It looks so so good he cut away any unnecessary material so it's not clunky nice hardware this is perfect seriously good job man thanks so right now we're going to drain out the fuel tank so we have a fuel pump and a jumper pack and we just want to make sure we clean out all the shavings from drilling because we still have some more drilling to do there we go nice that's a sweet pump can we just run that thing <laughs> so that is what we're after that's why we tilted the tank and drained everything. We got to get those shavings out. I just wiped the tank clean and we are good to go. Good to move on to well, some more drilling. So what we're doing with this system is we're feeding one 340 pump into here, one 340 pump into here, and the factory is going to be into here. So this will run under normal cruising. This will kick on with boost and this will kick on with boost, feeding all three pumps through this filter. This is like, what about a thousand ish wheel horsepower Easily setup? Wheel. Yep. Yeah, totally normal, not a band. Normal for us, but yeah. <laughs> so this is a universal piece and it may need to be cut down depending on your application. So we put it in here. Yeah, it's bottoming out before it can seal. No big deal. We just have to measure and cut. I have experience with this tool. We're definitely measuring once and just cutting once. All right, let's see if this guy fits in here now. Oh yeah, we did good. Look at that, perfect. Jordan's over here working on the second bracket. I don't wanna jinx myself, but we're doing pretty darn good. It's been about three hours so far, tank is out, Jordan is rocking these brackets out, and the fuel system is really coming together too. So this isn't a part we're actually gonna be using, it's a tool so that we know where to drill our holes. Cool, so we got one, and now to center this, we're just gonna take a bolt right there. Now we're locked, ready to go. Get a little bit more cleaning to do. That's why we drained all the fuel though. So we can just vacuum this stuff up. I don't recommend using a vacuum cleaner with a fuel tank. The fuel vapors, especially on an older vacuum cleaner, they can make things blow up and explode, which we don't want. 
But we drained this out about a half hour ago. All the vapors are gone. I took a rag to the inside. What I'm saying, people, here is that I'm not responsible for anything you guys do, all right? This is just what we're doing, and it's, it's worked so far. Now, this is a new one for me. This is a fuel foam baffle, and essentially, this tank doesn't really have any baffling in it to keep the fuel around the fuel pump. So when you take a turn or you launch hard, the fuel could slosh around. This is mostly when you're under about a quarter tank or so, and you don't want the fuel pumps to starve for fuel, especially the two gigantic ones that we're installing. Uh, so we have to fit this in there. So now we're just gonna smoosh this down like this. Not gonna lie, this seems impossible at the moment. It's like building a ship in a bottle, but probably a million times easier than doing that. All right, we're almost there. We're almost there. Yay! <laughs> yeah, this takes a little practice. Okay, note to self, read instructions. Uh, they say to use the drill guide as kind of a funnel and then fold it like this. All right. Step it in the top, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's way better. Okay. All right, that worked much better. So we still have that bottom rubber basket there. Everything's good. All right, everything is lined up nicely. Next, we have to slide this guy in, so they give you a little slit in there. So you can install it in the tank, and then if we drilled these holes properly, these should all fit through. Beautiful. Next up, Jordan is gonna be TIG welding our new trans cooler to the bottom of the Pro Charger intercooler. While Jordan's welding up our transmission cooler, we have to install these two fuel pumps and this top hat. It's a beautiful piece, I must say. Uh, these are 340 liter per hour fuel pumps. There are two of them. This is a ton of fuel because we're gonna be using E85. And these are the stealth pumps, so they should be fairly quiet, just like that. All right, we have a really nice thick gasket and the fuel pumps are going in with brand new socks, of course. It's a very clean setup, by the way. Ow. It's not a real project until you get hurt, right? And really nice weather pack connectors. This is a very clean setup. Look at that. This could be factory. This is better than factory. This is so cool. So here's what the transmission cooler looks like from underneath with everything all welded up. I mean, it looks factory, basically. And this is so nice. We get to use these stock lines. It's mounted perfectly to the intercooler. Everything clears. And this is one of the best trans coolers on the market. This has a lot more surface area than that weird looking one from the factory. And with both of the brackets done and we started throwing some intercooler piping in there, this looks so, so mean. LSC Express is coming along. Time for me to take the doghouse out. And the easiest way to do this is to take the bolts out that hold this seat in. Yeah, I'm thinking we should get some new carpet. Let me just pull these guys here. And one on the driver's side. There we go. Take this guy out. Yep, 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 I know people. It'll all be clean before the event, don't worry. I haven't done any cleaning of the van yet at all, as you can tell. A couple more of these guys. All right, and then it just pulls out, basically. With the doghouse out, you can get to everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove our coils and our spark plugs and our valve covers. Because at over 200,000 miles, we need to replace the valve spring. So I'm going with a dual valve spring this time, and these are really nice for boosted applications. So what can happen if you're using old or weak valve springs, especially with boost, is the valves will float. You'll definitely see this on the dyno, and in extreme cases, the valve could hit the piston, and you don't want that. Right, let's pull our main plug. And I just noticed here we have a spark plug wire where the insulation has come apart. So I'll probably just want to replace these. There we go. I gotta say, working in the interiors, it's pretty nice. I mean, I'm sitting on carpet, I'm leaning up against the passenger seat. This, this is how you do it. Passenger side coil coming out. Well, good chance this thing has never been off. That's some LS quality, look at that. No oil leaks, nothing. I'm telling you, LS engine, best overall V8 engine ever made. Reliable, cheap. Powerful, it, it has it all. Coil pack number two coming off. So right now Jordan is mocking up some of our piping. So this is some of the stuff that came out of the kit for the 2500 HD Chevy truck, but it doesn't directly fit. So this is what he's coming up with now. This is a PC just tacked together. And before that gets fully welded, we have to throw in the fan shroud, make sure nothing's gonna hit. All right. It just snaps right in there, doesn't it? Wow, yeah, dude. They made it a little, it's a little on the high side of the dimension. But, but it's perfect. It works. Yeah. This fan shroud is absolutely perfect. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. All right, so that piece is coming out. It was just barely hitting the very bottom here. 
So he's got to make a change. That's nice. Look at the wiring harness. Good job, man. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, this is perfect. Very nice. These guys do not mess around at all. We're going to have four additional relays on the van. So two for the fuel pumps and two for the fans. Look at this. Just quality. Ow. Oh, that's skin. Yeah. No blood yet, though. We're good. That top layer of skin is basically like paint protection film. Nothing's getting through. Yeah. Just just use the pliers. That, that helps. I don't have my super long spark plug wire-specific pliers with me. Okay. I got this. Cool. All right, we're bouncing around a lot here. Lots of work is getting done. We are removing the entire supercharger with the bracket because we found out this pulley, it's a four and three quarter inch pulley because it's too big. We don't think it's gonna make that much boost. So we're swapping it out for a 3.85 inch supercharger pulley. And hopefully this will put us around 10 PSI, uh, which I think is definitely gonna be over 500 wheel. The lower is coming back out. There we go. Look at that big, big Chicago pizza pie right there. Get out of here. We need more. All right, here we go. We're already adding more boost to the van and it technically hasn't seen any boost yet. Look at the difference. No good. Okay, I did start to eventually bleed. Sweet. So at some point I'm gonna try and fit long tube headers on the van. We just ran out of time to mess with those. Let's get our spark plugs out though. Look at these beautiful factory AC Delco plugs. This van was fleet maintained and they just sent it to the Chevy dealer for whatever it needed. But we definitely need to run a colder plug. Valve cover time. I run out of room on this last one. So I gotta go manual here. But you break it free once and it comes out with your fingers. Crack and open the valve cover for the first time. Oh yeah. Oh, that thing was sealed up. Nice. Valve cover coming out. What do we got in this engine? Beautiful. No sludge. This looks great. You could definitely tell right away that they kept up with their oil changes. I love this van. But look at these single spring valve springs. They gotta go, but they definitely have done their job. Good job, little buddies. All right, my next step is to start removing rocker arms, but we wanna do this in a specific order. So any rocker arm that is currently pushing a valve down, we're gonna leave that alone. So see these two right here at the same height? That means they don't have a lot of tension on them so we can remove the bolts. All right, this is a little eight mil. Once you crack them free, they're pretty easy to take out. So I've got these two rocker bolts loose. And I'm gonna keep these in order, but keep in mind these are offset. So you can see the tips here that go onto the top of the valve. They look different. And you really can't mess this up. Check it out. If you put this one here, it clearly doesn't line up. And same here. So anyway, those two are out. And then see how the spring heights are the same back here? We're gonna do these next. Just don't loosen up ones like this where the spring has been compressed a lot. It's just putting a lot of stress on the threads of this bolt, especially when you go back together. Driver side valve cover coming off. Satisfying to break gaskets loose for the first time in forever. There we go. With the driver's side valve cover off, we can see this spring is compressed right here, um, but we have some that aren't, so we can go ahead and take off a few of these rockers. Break them loose by hand and zip them off. I want to check out this tray that the guys have over here. This is so nice. So you can organize everything from rocker arms, lifters, push rods. It's pretty sweet. All right, blower's ready to go back in with a smaller pulley. And we also added a little drain so that when we need to change the oil, it makes it just a million times easier. So we have a remote drain line. That's pretty cool. Blower's going back in, back to its home. Yeah, this blower's really not that bad to take in and out, especially if you just do it with a bracket attached to it. Supercharger's back on, so is the belt. And Taylor just loosened up our harmonic balancer bolt, so this is coming out. So this is what Pro Charger gives you. This is simply a tool, so that bolt. And then we have a drill guide, and we'll tighten this up. All right, from here, we're just gonna go ahead and, and drill right into the crankshaft. All these flakes for the magnet. Look at that. This is literally my crankshaft on a magnet. I don't know what that is. Is that a twig? We picked up a twig. <laughs> so then we just removed this guy. 
Right now we're gonna install a pin into the crank. And it pushes right in. A couple of love taps. And now we put a little bit of Loctite on a brand new harmonic balancer bolt. And that'll go in. So the reason we pinned the crank is because we added this big blower. So that is going to cause drag, more resistance, and it could actually spin the harmonic balancer on the crank, which would destroy it. So some engines have a factory keyway. This one does not. So we added the pin so the balancer won't spin on the crank and, and cause us to have a really bad day. So sometimes you can double pin it as well. Uh, but in this case, Procharger sends out the tool for a single pin and that's been tested and proven to hold up really well. Right now, Taylor is spinning the engine. Uh, okay, stop. So we don't have any tension on these springs anymore. So now we can remove the rockers. All right, and the organizing tray, they go. With all the rockers removed, we can take out this rail. And now we can start setting up to remove two of these springs at once. So right now, all of the valves are up and we wanna keep it that way. We don't want these valves falling down. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. With the spark plugs out, we're gonna thread in a fitting here with no Schrader valve. So just like if you were doing a compression test or a leak down test, but we don't want the Schrader. We wanna send air right into the cylinder to keep these valves up. So, okay, that's threaded in. I have our shop air hose connected to a leak down tester. Now, I'm gonna connect it here and we are filling the cylinder with air. So these valves are closed and now we have air pressure pushing up on them to make sure that they stay closed. What's nice about using the leak down tester is we can check the health of the engine. So we're at about a 20% leak down right now. So 100 PSI here, 80 PSI is what it's holding inside of the cylinder. Typically anything under 20 is considered healthy. I've even seen it be worse than this, like 30, and the engine has absolutely no issues. So this one doesn't burn any oil, it doesn't have any misfires, it runs beautifully. So. We're gonna say it's good. Actually, for what I'm doing, it's probably better than good. There's a good chance that after 200,000 miles, the rings have kind of re-gapped themselves and they're just a little bit looser, which is good for boost. So 200,000 mile LS engines, they're kind of better than lower mileage engines if you're gonna boost them. I'll take it. With the valves being held up, we're gonna use a tool that's gonna to push down on both of the springs at once. And this is why we had to remove the rocker arms well they get in the way of the springs but also because we need to thread these bolts right into where the rockers went now we can turn this and this is going to compress both of the springs at the same time now while we crank this down we got to get our magnet ready see these little keepers they're going to want to fall out okay so you can kind of rotate them there we go we got another keeper and you really only need to compress the spring enough to get these out and you're done Okay, there we go. And we will be replacing these as well. Okay, so now we can go the other way, loosen this back up and move our tool out of the way. And okay, we'll get this guy out of here, pull this guy out. And then we have our original springs. So you can see here, the valves aren't going anywhere because of the air pressure. So now while we're in there, let's get some new seals in. These just pop right up. If you guys are experiencing an issue where you let your car or truck sit overnight and then it puffs out a little cloud of blue smoke, a lot of times these valve seals are bad. And I'm soaking up some of this oil in here so we can get this nice and clean. And we'll definitely be doing an oil change after this. So in the dual valve spring kit, they give you the spring locators. Those just slide right over the guides there. Then we're gonna take our new valve guide seal, stick it in some oil, and just slide it right over. And we'll do that again with the other one. Okay. All right, so now we need to push these things down. A little 12 mil will work in a hammer. That's it. Don't go too crazy. As soon as you hear that sound change, you're done. That thud right there, we're on. Now, not super important because we're using the factory cam, but if you wanted to check your spring height and pressures, you install this little tool and we'll thread this down a little bit and we'll get these keepers back in. We're just gonna use the old ones right now and we'll screw this up. All right, just like that. All right, so we're a little bit past the seven and a half mark. Yep, so just so I can verify it, I'll do it here. So that's relatively tight, 1.76. It's gonna be a pretty tight spring, 1.8 is common. So now that we know the height, we can stick our new spring into this tool that's gonna to measure the pressure, and we're gonna set it up exactly where it was. Approximately 1.76. Mm -hmm. So we've got about 150 pounds on the seat, which is acceptable. What do you think this guy's at? 202,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess about 90. We'll test the factory spring and see how bad it is. So we're sitting about 90. Okay. So it's not really that far off our factory spring would be. Yeah. Um, so it's impressive for 200,000 miles that it's 
still doing its job. It's just not enough spring for boost. Right. So we're gonna put the Thule spring back in, about our 150 on the seat, okay? Now we're gonna subtract 600,000. So we're gonna go to 1.15 inch. That's your 600 lift cam. This tells you your open pressure, which should be probably 350, 360. So if you did do a, a camshaft about 600 lift, you'd see of just about 400 pounds of spring pressure on it, which is uh, exactly what we set up a lot of the street application cams. Okay. All right, let's crank this factory oh, spring down. And the Ooh. maximum I can get out of it, At solid coil. height, we're 200, which is pretty much coil bind here, 250. <laughs> wow, look at the difference. Coil bind right now, it can't go anymore, and it's only at 250. Jeez. It's pretty cool to know that these springs would have just continued on and on and on had we not been adding boosts to this van. They basically didn't wear out at all after 202,000 miles. So that's definitely a testament to factory engineering. With our new seals on, we can go ahead and install our dual valve springs and our upgraded titanium retainers. And believe it or not, there's a big difference between the factory retainers and the titanium. It's all in weight. And I mean, this is like a feather compared to this guy. It might not look like it makes a big difference, but that weight on the valve train is just gonna make our valve train work a lot easier and it'll free up a little bit of horsepower too. Now we're just gonna set up our tool once again. Shimmy this guy in there like so. And we'll crank down on this. And you can use a power tool if you're being careful. And we're just pulling this down enough to get the little keepers in there. Should be good. All right, I like to put the magnet right there, just in case. And then we can slide in our keepers like that. These guys are tapered as well. And we'll slide this side on. That. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, cool. Yeah, let's take the tool out. Bam! As long as the keepers are flat and even, you know, you've put them on properly, everything is good. Now you just have to repeat this a bunch of times and those, those aren't fun. After you've done that, now you can release the air. So basically when you're doing this, you don't ever want to lose air pressure or disconnect until you are done. Otherwise these valves will drop and then you're doing a lot more work than you wanted to do. So right now Taylor's working on our big Dash 8 feed for the fuel and he's making up all of the fittings. Very nice. So a little bit of hose assembly lube here and then you just thread it on in. And then he's gonna blow it out. All right, and that's it. This fitting's done, quite a few more to go. Now we're gonna connect one of the factory fuel lines that Taylor just made to the factory port, the plastic fitting there. And this is really neat. It's gonna slide right over and then we can thread it in. Look at that, see how there's a slit in it? That is so cool. So we don't have to mess with any of this stuff and we can use our gigantic braided 8AN hoses. This is beautiful and look at this guys. I mean, this is by far the nicest fuel system I think I've had in any of my cars and it's on this. It's on this car. I'm doing valve springs. Taylor is doing fuel system. We have Jordan on the intake, of course. So I'm kind of bouncing around here with the camera, uh, but this is where he's at so far. This is for the blow off valve. Yep. He had to make a little modification on the placement of where this all goes. Uh, so we're using some of their tubing and some from the Pro Charger kit for the 2500 HD truck and kind of just making it work. It's just a gigantic puzzle. Here's where he's at with some of the puzzle right now. You guys already saw this awesome bracket. This side is done as well. And we did have to clock this blower straight down. It was kind of facing this way towards the frame rail before and that didn't work. And right now he's just working on the tube that's going to feed in there to the throttle body. Jordan just got done welding up this pipe and this one here. Look at how good this looks. So this is where the LS7 mass airflow sensor is going to fit, sweet. It's the next morning, so day two. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these springs. Uh, if I see anything on the leak down test that's interesting, I'll let you know. Yeah, a little bit more on that one, but honestly, when the piston shoots all the way down, which it does when you fill it with air, it'll leak down a little bit more. Typically, if you're really doing this to check the health of the engine, you'll raise the piston up a bit. But I wanna show you guys where we're at with the cold piping because it's all pretty much done. So that's the one going into the throttle body. Uh, we still have to get our mass airflow sensor in. It's connected there, goes through here. We have the intercooler, of course, and here is where the Pro Charger blow-off valve is gonna be. So it'll be quiet in the car, but super loud outside where it, where it counts. Fans are in, we have to secure the radiator and still build a little intake here for the supercharger. Taylor just got done building this harness because we are using the mass airflow out of a Corvette or a Camaro and they have different pins. So we got the pin out from the van, 
switched it up in the harness. So now this will directly connect. Something else that's really neat is that they're able to activate the new electric fans and add in a flex fuel sensor to the factory computer. So this 2012 van came with flex fuel capability, but we're adding a lot more advanced capability with this system in that we're adding a flex fuel sensor to the fuel system, which makes it much more accurate, especially for a boost situation. And Justin, how do the vans normally figure out the ethanol content without a flex fuel sensor? What, what the vans typically do in a stock form is they infer the flex fuel content based on fuel trims, which is very inaccurate, especially when we are getting into boost situations, exhaust situations, camshaft situations. Here's the finished product on the fuel tank. This is ridiculous, guys. <laughs> Look at how nice this is on my van. Wow, the wiring Taylor did is amazing. Everything is routed properly. Look at this. So we have a lot of extra line here. So we're gonna get the tank in right now uh, and then we'll trim this up going to the fuel rail. Fuel tank is going in. Look at these fuel lines. Look at this exhaust. It's a 3500 Express, it needs it. I already got an electric space van. What you got? At the shop. Oh, it's weird. It's a one of one concept van from 2009. Right now it's like all van content for me. Is it street legal? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Did you drive on the street? Uh, I did. I drove it one block on the street. It broke and then I charged it up on it with an extension cord and then drove it one block back to my shop. <laughs> yes. I got it for 1500 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. No way. Uh, the company was Bright or, and then it was called the Bright Idea was the name of the van. I think I know that guy. Yeah. What? Dude, if you know the, anyone. If it's, I think he's right up, I think it's about an hour and a half from here. Hmm. All right, tank's in. All right, so we're gonna get the strap in right here. Oh yeah, we need to push okay. that up. All right, we had to do a little shimming around. Now this is gonna fit. Oh yeah, I couldn't get nice. Fuel tank's in. Our fuel has arrived. We're running the van on E85, or in this case, E90 from Ignite, and they're restocking. So this is how the guys at Indiana Muscle Car run all their cars that are gonna be running an ethanol blend, flex fuel cars, stuff like that. Minimum octane rating, 114, and this is E90. Uh, Jay, what yeah. is 100% ethanol? What's the octane rating on that? Pure ethanol, which has no denaturant, no anything in it. So actually beverage grade alcohol is 116 octane. I'm finally done with the passenger side and every cylinder is right around 20% leakage. And this is a first for me. I'm working up in the air. So the van's jacked up. They're working on the fuel lines underneath. I keep on bouncing around like crazy, helping out filming, doing these valve springs, and I'm standing down there. I'm like, guys, just lift me up in the van. I gotta finish these. So that's what we're doing. I just gotta remember where I am so I don't fall out. This side's definitely more difficult to do. I'm kind of twisting and bending my, one of my legs is literally dangling out into the air because we're, we're still very high up here, but gotta do what you gotta do. That's done, two more to go. We're doing some fuel line stuff up here though right now. So we're gonna slide this guy over like that and now Taylor is measuring out exactly what we need here for this fuel line going to the rail. All right, now we have our fuel line cutters. I think it's a beast. Look at that. Perfect. Taylor just installed our new end. Go ahead and slide this guy on. There we go. And then we have this piece here. These are so nice. I'd never used these before. Such good quality though. There we go. All the plumbing for the fuel system is done. I mean, this is insane. <laughs> this is nuts. So this is the main feed from the factory pump. So this is what's gonna be feeding the van with fuel all the time, it goes through the filter. Uh, and then when we get into boost, we have a boost activated hob switch that's gonna turn on our aftermarket pumps, feed into here. This is, this is so cool, it kinda looks like like a Terminator hand or something like that. But it's gonna also feed fuel into our fuel filter. And we have a regulator here as well. And this is the flex fuel sensor, but super professional. The guys here at Indiana Muscle, just seriously, everything is top notch. Even on my crusty van, this is the setup they're doing. <laughs> so I've installed a few of these flex fuel sensors on my AMG cars that don't have a return line. So the van from the factory doesn't either, but we have a return from the regulator. So there's really no point in having this in the feed. It could be a restriction, although probably not a big restriction. It's one of those why have it in the feed when you can just have it in the return. It just needs to sense that ethanol. That's its only job. Do your job. It's made by Continental, like the tire company. It's kind of cool. So I guess some of the newer GM cars use that Continental flex fuel sensor. I thought they just made tires. Valve springs are finally done and I'm moving on to some fuel injectors. This is a long rail bolt. Don't drop it, don't drop it. 
So I still have some valve train work to do on the rocker arms and we're gonna install new push rods. So while we wait for that stuff to come in, I'm doing the injectors. Otherwise I would have had the valve covers back on by now. All right, now we're gonna pull up here on the injectors and hope they pop out. They've been in here for a long time. Sometimes they can be a little stuck. Oh, there we go. Look at those crusty O-rings, that's bad. All right, these were a nightmare to pop up, but we got it. Let's see if we can sneak this guy out of here. Getting this fuel rail out of here is a pain in the butt because of this engine harness and this crossover tube. Uh, no real reason to take it out. We just need to replace injectors, that's all. You guys have seen me do this a few times. We just did big old 1,050 cc injectors on the E55 wagon. So after you pop that clip off, just kind of give it a little, little shake. Get a little fuel that goes on the ground. I like to lubricate the O-rings on the injectors and then we just push it up in there and you reinstall your clip. Reinstall, reinstall yourself, there we go. All right, cool. So that's one of eight, very easy to do. And then we've basically tripled the amount of fuel because these factory injectors are much smaller. Uh, but one thing I did notice is that these injectors are a little bit longer. So we're gonna have to figure something out with that. I got these fuel injectors from Fuel Injector Connection and I've gotten a few sets from them before my YouTube days, very cool company. And what's nice about them when you're tuning, we're gonna be using HP tuners, is they give you a little flash drive with all of the data on the injectors. This saves a ton of time and just makes your calibration way more accurate because we know specifically how these injectors are working. So anyway, kind of a cool little thing that they send out here. Tuners love this. Injectors are all done, so let's put them into the intake here and we can see our height issue now. So we have once we push these in, should go down a little. All right, we can work with that. We just might need a little spacer, that's all. I think this spacer is gonna work out. Oh yeah, look at that. Push it down, get our bolt in there. Cool. We are golden. Woo, we made it. Perfect. Injectors are all done, so we just have to plug them back in. And this is really cool. We don't need an adapter harness or anything. Since this is a 2012, it has the newer style connector. Look at this, they just stamp 1000 on it. Love that. Next up, we're gonna be swapping out the factory map sensor for a ZR1 map sensor. So I already removed the clip now, you just gotta pry it out. Get out, get out. All right, there we go. Goodbye factory map. You've sensed pressure for long enough. Your job here is done. Bum, 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 Oh, it's upside down. I don't know why I'm doing the Rocky. This is the bad boy right here, the ZR1 map sensor. The plastic bracket broke that holds the map sensor down, so I'm making one. I just took a piece of flat stock like this, bent it into what you see here. I had to cut this one off. There's a razor edge here that we should probably take care of. All right, solid. Let's go install this. So from the factory, this is all that holds the map sensor in. There's a little plastic standoff on the intake that snapped off. It's hard to see, but it's kind of a bad design. Since we're adding boost to this anyway, and because GM put this little threaded hole right here, we're gonna see if we can take advantage and do a little clamp like that. And we'll give this guy a final tighten. Oh, this is solid. Perfect, not going anywhere. Sensors being held down, honestly. If there ever was an issue with these sensors popping out, this is the way to go. We got our parts in. So next up is a trunnion upgrade. So you can see in here, there's little needle bearings right there. And these can fail. These rocker arms essentially can fail where these caps will pop out. They're just pressed in. And then you get needle bearings in your engine. That's no good. So these guys devised a cool little tool that they made. And these just pound right out. There we go. So that can happen in your engine, essentially. Now, what's kind of awesome about my 200,000 mile van engine is that we have checked all of these. Sometimes you see these kind of popped out a little bit. That's when you know they're gonna fail. Uh, and they're all perfect. They're tight. They just, nothing is bad on this engine. It's basically the best engine in the world and now we're gonna boost it. All right, so with the new one, you have bronze bushings on both sides and they just get pressed in like so. Other side as well. Sweet. Next up, we're gonna put a C-clip here and we're gonna slide a washer on and then install it through the body of the rocker. One more washer on this side and we install our clip on this end as well. And voila, there you have it. We've upgraded the trunnion on this rocker arm. No more needle bearings to worry about. And now that it's not press fit and it actually has this retaining clip, we don't have to worry about anything popping out. So 
Really cool upgrade to do. I've done this on most of my LS cars, my Turbo Trans Am, and most recently the Caprice PPV. So a little bit of added insurance so that nothing bad happens to your engine. Before we reinstall our upgraded rockers, we have some upgraded push rods. So these are hardened push rods. They're gonna be much stronger than the factory units. And again, while we're in there, it'll just take us like an extra two minutes to swap these out. You just pull them out and we're gonna put a dab of Molly Lube on each end and then simply slide it right back in. That's it. So if you're doing a large camshaft, you definitely wanna do hardened push rods. We have the stock cam still, but we've added boost here. So this will prevent any deflection in the push rod. You don't want any of that. It can mess up the valve train harmonics and you can lose horsepower. And these could also just bend, even with the factory cam if you've added boost. So in a few minutes, we've eliminated any potential issues with that. Well, at least on this bank. With our new push rods, our new springs, and our rebuilt rockers, we can go back together now. And remember, these are offset. We're gonna use some red Loctite on these rocker arm bolts too, and get them started by hand. With all the rockers installed, we can snug these bolts down. Just a little though, we're not gonna torque just yet. With these snug, now we can torque them down to the factory spec of 22 foot-pounds. There we go. This one doesn't make that loud of a click. So I'm gonna make the click for it. Click. And remember before when we removed the rocker arms, we rotated the engine so that the valves were all the way up and that there wasn't that much pressure on the rocker bolt when you go to remove it. We're doing the same thing going back in. So you just wanna make sure you're not pushing the valve open by tightening that bolt. It's not the end of the world if you do, it's just technically the proper way to do it. With our valve train back together, Let's clean up some valve covers. They really didn't even have any oil on them. It was just dirt, dirt from driving around fields. I'm pretty sure the van was used just to drive around workers uh, who were working in the oil industry in North Dakota. There's a big boom in North Dakota. Unfortunately, not anymore. But uh, yeah, that van I think was just meant to drive them around to and from the work site. I didn't go too crazy. It still has a little bit of that van patina but we have brand new gaskets, so let's get this valve cover back on. There we go, little zip zam zoo. Do a little Alex torque on this one. Click, 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 click. Next we have spark plugs and we're going two steps colder. So when you go boosted or if you're using nitrous, you want a colder plug so it doesn't detonate with the added cylinder pressure, which adds heat. And also you wanna make sure that the gap is pretty tight. These are about 22, 23 thousandths of an inch. So with boost, you can blow the spark out and using ethanol, it's harder to ignite. So this is a perfect gap. Usually these are pretty good out of the box, but I'll double check all of them. And in she goes. Our little candela. I made it a point to learn a little bit more car talk in Italian and candela is spark plug. The more you know. Next up is our patina coil pack. I, I'm not gonna lie, I tried cleaning it a little and there was a section of it that looked too good. It was like down here, it looked too, too good. I'm like, no, we need the patina. So I left it. Look at these beautiful new spark plug wires. I love the fact that they're black. Not a huge fan of the red ones. If there's an option for black, I'm doing black, but these are made by Taylor. And something I really like about these is that you can really hear the click. Oh, you might not be able to hear it, but you can feel it. And with these, if you take them on and off a bunch of times, you can still feel it. Some aftermarket spark plug wires, you can't tell if it's really on the plug. Look at this meaty monster. It's gonna carry all the spark. I'm all wrapped up here. The engine is all assembled this side as well. We are getting pretty close to a first start. It's nine o'clock at night and me and Justin have been going strong here for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> but it's all gonna pay off. We're uh, just wrapping up a few things, plugging in the mass airflow sensor. Justin's got the injector data uploaded, so we just have to zip in a tune file, a base tune file, see if she fires. All right, so Justin's got our base tune file loaded up. First start. So right now we're adding 20% fuel, so we don't need to rev the transmission file because we're not making any changes to that. We're gonna be revving only the E38 engine file and see if we can get it to start and fuel trim, and then we'll know kind of the ballpark where the vehicle is. There we go. There's my van. He had to add fuel in the tune 
uh, two or three times in order to get it to fire. So the first start is always kind of a guessing game because we replaced the mass airflow sensor and installed those gigantic fuel injectors. So now he's gonna be able to start getting a reading to see where fuel trims are. We started out, we got fuel trims of plus 20. So we're adding 20% to the mass airflow curve and hopefully it runs better now. <laughs> That's idling on its own, right? Nice. <laughs> oh, listen to that. <laughs> so what we have here is a bypass valve. This isn't actually a blow off valve. So right now it's bypassing air and you can feel it. It's kind of cool. It's not running perfectly right now because we still have to dial in the tune. Kind of sounds like it has a cam right now. Oh man. So eventually I will be doing a cam. I want to build a motor for this thing or I was thinking about doing an experiment where we just increase the ring gap and let it eat and see how much power we can make on a 6400 pound van before it blows up I don't know yet I don't know let me know in the comment section build a motor and just swap it out or experiment with the motor in there all right it is now day three I got a little bit of rest last night but honestly my excitement is keeping me fueled here we got this thing running last night it runs well and most of the major systems are complete so obviously the exhaust is done the cold side is done the valve train is done uh, but there are a lot of little odds and ends that we need to finish up uh, and then we have to do dyno runs shenanigans outside in the middle of nowhere mexico i mean indiana and of course the big fill the van with cans event so i'm going to end this one here and we're going to pick up in the next video finishing everything and seeing what kind of power this van can make and we're going to see how much food we can pack in the back of it that that's going to be really really interesting so i just want to say a big thank you to all of the local businesses the family-owned local businesses that have helped make this van project possible so fluid motor union in naperville illinois with their exhaust work they do a lot of general repair and maintenance work as well as crazy custom stuff on exotics and every kind of car you could think about and of course my guys here at indiana muscle car this is my first time working out here in leesburg with these guys and their reputation definitely is warranted these guys do top-notch work very meticulous justin is a trained engineer and everything they do is just so it's so good i mean especially considering what we're working on i can only imagine what the details look like on a you know, kind of a newer car. So they specialize in a lot of late model EFI work. So if you live anywhere near Leesburg, they have a lot of cars shipped in. I'll drop all their information down below. Check them out and you'll see them again in the next video. And if you go to the Fill the Van with Cans event, they're gonna try and make it up there as well. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next van video. This is gonna be so wild. Most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next one. In this video, we are doing something. Okay. What about a hundred and like, what about a hundred and... I love hanging out. Mile. Make a U-turn at West 25th Avenue. Shut up. In this video, we are going to finish supercharging my LS3 Express. LS3? Oh my gosh. Okay. Next, right, right now we're gonna drop this gigantic. Right now we're gonna drop the fuel uh, lines. Okay. So the van will. So the van will. So under. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In this video, we are going to finish supercharging my LS3. LSC, that's the name of the company. Okay. So these are 340 liter per gallon. Yeah. <laughs> liter per gallon, liter per hour. He's okay. psyched out now. Yeah, all right. Cracking open the valve cover for the first time. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now, now we're gonna now we're gonna connect the new feed. Uh, now we're gonna connect the, um, let's see. Now we're gonna connect one of the fuel feed lines. Uh, yeah, lines, okay. In this video, we are going to finish supercharging the LS3 again, again. I'll show you more on this a little bit later when we hit the dyno, but the injectors are from Fuel Injector Connection. Okay, there's a fly right in my face, ruining my scene. Get out of here, fly.